Chapter 4 of Alone in the House. And it's a dark house indeed, except when there's some light, like right here. But it's like darker in other areas, like this corner. And what secrets do those dark corners have? Well, nothing in this case. But sometimes there are. Sometimes. Still don't know what. Just what this evening needed. Some ambiance. And I think there's a lot of ambiance here in Dersetto. Still don't know what the deal is with this hanging thing is. Like, did the doctor just not wanna- not want anyone to... get this? I don't know. Well, what I do know is that we're trying- we want to get to the doctor's office. So let's see. Dr. Gray's office is on the first floor, next to the clerk's office, and the treatment room and the reception. We can get there th from the stair hall. No, oh, this is still locked. Okay, yeah, locked door on the mezzanine. Don't know why that one would be locked. We've been out to the mezzanine, but maybe, maybe that part of it we haven't been able to get to? I'm not sure about that. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that detective fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, like us. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. I <gasps> You don't need to know about all that. Just, go. Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. Well, we met those those two before. One of them we met in the convenience store. Well, it wasn't a convenience store. It was just like a store. And we got a thing. And then uh, the other one we met in... It was a cave in the swamp. We were attacked by a monster, and then suddenly we were back in Dersetto. They seem nice, but it seems like they're fans of the goat with a thousand young. And, uh, are very anxious about her coming, and that might be a problem. Could be a problem. The two orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Dossetto, and Conby wasn't sure who he could trust. There's only one- only one person that Carnby trusts. It's Jack Daniels. I think we all know that. Alright, um... This one's still locked? Yeah, that one is. That one goes out to- I mean, we've been, been in the hallway. Maybe the door's just blocked. Well, that door's blocked. Dining room looks a little different. Maybe. Christ, what the hell was that? I don't know. It's blocked. Oh. Something on the other side of that? It's blocked. This is blocked too. Alright. Blocked? No. Library is not blocked. 
Lunacy and the Astarte Artists Colony. Yes, the group of artists who used to live at Derseto, apparently. Lunacy and the Astarte Artists Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Pontchartrain. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of Derseto's history. Even the name Derseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. In the case of naming the plantation, Derseto was certainly not an accident. We know that Elia Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult, for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns, when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Dorsetto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. As much as Dorsetto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Shub Nigrath is, on the other hand, very uncommon. Almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Udnausprechlichen Kulten and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Darseto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Derseto as malnourished and maniacal. As much as the army tried to save them, they fought back with fervor, as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte Artis colony remains a mystery, the recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. All right. Look, I know that everyone who's lived on this estate has ended up with horrible deaths involving uh, cult rituals and lunacy. But I think we can make it work here. Look, land's expensive. Have you seen this house? I think it's worth the risk.
be going back out to the, uh, is that the conser- yeah, the conservatory is out there. First, let's have a look around. Oh, I hear someone. Oh, opera playbill. Oh, didn't bring this up automatically. There it is. The Pirates of Panchartrain. So we got a mask and some papers. Oh, I hear a voice coming from there. Let's try... Let's see if we can go out here first. Anything different out here? This is where we came into the house. Yo. What is that? Tell me more, Whispering Tree. What does Edward want? Is it booze? I'm pretty sure the answer is booze. And also money with which you could buy booze. Well, the tree had a little whisper for us, but I don't see anything else here. The unusually large tree. Of course, there was an unusual tree in the original game, but that one was underground. And the voice of this tree sounded like, uh, Cassandra. Anything out around here? Go up that ladder. Do not have the key to that. We could try going up the... Uh, should I keep going this way, or should I try the, the door where we heard someone talking? Now you always wonder, hey, which way is progress? I want to go the opposite way. So if we go this way, what, where are we going? Actually, we will reach the doctor's office if we go this way. Okay, let me just try that other door. Never mind. Ladder got knocked down. We could jump. We could try a jump. Okay, we're not going to try to jump that. You know, in the demo, this hall turned into a swamp and there were fishmen. We have not seen fishmen as of yet. There were fishmen in the original game. No fishmen just yet, though, in this one. There have been, like, creatures in the swamp, but not quite fishmen. There must be a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. Yeah, the door is locked. I was about to ask... Is that cha has that changed? It doesn't seem like need that's changed. Key. I need that key. I don't have the combination for this. But maybe Jeremy did. Okay. It's, uh, the same format as that other safe. It's the clock. 
I mean, I don't suppose it would be the same combination. No. Left four, right five, left four was not it. Well, we could take a look at his notes. Since, uh, he said, hey, maybe Jeremy had the combination. But, uh, was there anything in here about a, a safe combination? Like, there's a bunch of circles we can see. And then there was this one. We have now seen all four of, of these. Any clues in what he's saying here about a combination? I mean, there's a 913 on this. We got it recently. There's no reason to think... I mean, there's no reason to th It's 9 slash 3, probably, because it's his date of admission. Of admission. I, c I could go with that. I don't see why that would be it. All right. Time to get Jeremy out of that contract so we can get the hell out of here. Something tells me I'm going to have to put my talisman to use. I mean, if we had a place to use the talisman... It worked. That was the combination. Okay. The empty room. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new worldview, in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this worldview, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Hmm. A person that was erased. That person never existed. No one remembers the person. Any documentation about that person is gone. Oh, what, what does Carnby think about that? Dr. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Carnby decided. He had to be. Either Dr. Gray was using the idea of the Dark Man to manipulate and torture Jeremy, or the Dark Man was an actual powerful being possessing Jeremy. And in that case, Dr. Gray was simply a stooge. Maybe both could be true at once. Combe felt his mind racing in all directions. No matter what, he had to find a way to break the pact. That was what Jeremy said was needed. It didn't even matter what was true or not. If Jeremy wouldn't leave their settle before the contract was broken, then Combe had to make it happen. He just wished the steps on the contract made a little more sense. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. I'm going to take a shit on his desk. Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. 
As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays. It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this Chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. All right. Well, we know that the Chthonian did indeed invade the Haven as uh, he stole our book. We were reading that book and he just took it. Well, so I guess this is, oh, I got a trophy. So I guess this is uh, from Jeremy's former doctor who just doesn't know what to do. He's saying, hey, not only is this man mad, but his madness is contagious. He can infect others with his words. It's all nonsense, of course. Then I took x-rays of his brain. And for some reason, like, something's blocking that. But it's probably nothing. Probably. Stairwell key. Stairwell key. Cassandra's things. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for, Mrs. Thompson. All right, so is she dead? They're cleaning up her things? She's not going to be here anymore. We got, oh, we got France! That's right, the globe was missing France. And we got a pirate treasure map. It's a very elaborate map. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. So if we go into McCarthy's room, we'll just, we should look there. Look for the treasure. Oh, but we have the stairwell key. Can... Would that open up that hallway? I mean, you wouldn't think the stairwell... Oh, yeah, the stair hall. The door is in the stair hall, so maybe that would work. The Flying Dutchman. Two out of three for when it makes you worse. The third one looks like, um, a jack-in-the-box. We saw one of those in Grace's room, right? It didn't register as an item, but... I mean, we can go back there. Ah! Or maybe not.
Oh yeah, sorry about that. You're right. It's it can't be real. What am I thinking? Sorry about that, Gandhi. Says the house. The clerk's office still. You're right. The the no. We did the safe combination. The clerk's office still has like a puzzle piece in it. Did we, we didn't see anything else in here, did we? Well... I don't see anything. Hmm, how odd. All right, so let's see if we can open this door now. Mm. It's not that. Okay. Not the wrong one. Stairwell key, not stair hall key. All right, so... We want to get to, uh, like the globe was outside of Grace and Cassandra's room. Let's at least try to go there. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink. Pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight. Something that's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out. And things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. Oh, God damn it, Grace. Stay put for once. It sounds like a fun time. Also, I couldn't help but notice that uh, the mask that Grace was making, you could sort of see peeking under her hat that it has, like, the same colored red hair as Low Poly Carnby. Is it going to be a mask of Low Poly Carnby? We can only hope. McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Carnby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. While Conby enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Grace. It was taunting him, like he was supposed to remember, but couldn't. He kept thinking about pirates for some reason. Why would he think about pirates? I do like the idea of Carnby looking at McCarfrey and thinking, Ugh, you're like me, but worse. Okay, first floor hall key. I better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. Yeah, it looks like McCarfrey dropped that. And let's put France. There's something missing. Like France is missing. Let's put that in. There we go. Ooh, the map. And what collection is this for? I think I pressed the wrong button, so it didn't bring this up automatically. Okay, this is part of Pirates of Ponchar Train. Uh, the mask is the only thing that we don't have yet. 
Let me go in Grace's room. Is that a Jack in the Box? Can we like add that to our collection? Yeah, there's a. Oh, maybe. Let's. What's what's this? Grace's drawings. Oh, do I need to find? Yeah, that's right. The note did say something about finding one of Grace's drawings. I guess we can add it to that when we find it. Okay, now this is a Lagni app. I keep pressing that. Now I have to f go find it manually. Okay, we collected When It Makes You Worse. What is the collection? What is the connection here between Jack in the Box, The Flying Dutchman, and Rorschach? What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. That you are so infatuated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope that it will heal better and faster. If only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? What do you think, Dr. Gray? Oh no, I thought I was improving myself. I thought I was a better person than how I used to be, only to realize that no, I'm not. I'm still the same person I always was. It was all just an illusion. I was all just, I was tricking myself into thinking that I was getting better. But it was never going to happen, was it? No, it never was. Anything new in here? Oh yeah, they cleaned up her things. Movie script, Slaughter Gulch! Alright, that added to Death of the Author. We need to find broken glasses. Send to Mr... Charles something. On the script. Cassandra's last page. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Okay, so there's more than one clue for it. Um, you know, I guess if you didn't get it when you were there, this is Cassandra saying, Conby, for the game to continue, you need to open that safe. The bottles left. They didn't. They didn't clean these up. What? What? They were cleaning the room, and they saw the four empty. Well, I guess they're not necessarily empty. The four medicine bottles with like weird mold on them. I guess we'll leave these here. Maybe that's everything from the room. Remember that there was someone else who died? Another guest? We found her in the in her bed? That hasn't come up. Like, I mean, Emily said a couple guests have died, but... Aside from that... It does feel like guests dying are an afterthought. We are seeing things from the perspective of Carnby, and he just hasn't had time to think about those things. Alright, let's, uh, see if we can get into the first floor hallway now. Oh. No, no, no. He coming? He's just kind of standing. Okay, no, he's gone. He's gone. Well, I guess he can appear here, even if he's not gonna. 
Yeah, this is McCarfrey's room. Apparently there's treasure. Neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. Yeah, just because he's tidy doesn't mean anything. Is there anything under that bed? Bullets. Also, he's not that tidy. Look at this. More bullets. Moment of clarity. Sometimes. I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dossetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. As far as coffins go, it's not a bad one. The Dark Man aside. Alright, so this would be the treasure? Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Oh, do I need a tool? I do not have a tool. This one is Ruth's room. Oh yeah, Ruth is the dead woman? Whoop. Oh, we can walk on the bed? I didn't think we could do that. Some solitaire. Hmm. Is there really nothing in here? I mean, this seems conspicuous. Doesn't seem like I can interact with it. Well, the room is blue. I guess there's nothing in here. And this one should be the empty room. The room that has never had a guest in it. Well, it's locked, so never mind. That'll lead to the grand parlor. Ooh. I can't take this much more. This has to end. I don't know. This is kind of nice. We're getting some live music? Maybe a dinner? Can I see the menu? Uh, it's a little far away. Can I see it? Is there another menu around I can look at? Mm, I can't read that from here. Harmby doesn't want to belt one out. menu on there. Nah, I can't make anything out there. Too small. Oh. 
Maybe Carnby, Carnby should serve himself a drink. Jangling Shaker? Okay, that's two out of three for a goat without horns. Looks like the third one is some Blair Witch kind of thing. No, no, can't take that. The money's right there, Carnby. We might need it, you know, for the mystery. Let me just take, make sure there's nothing else in the remainder of the room. Doesn't seem so. And that's that for that. Memories of a better time. Well, I mean, no, this room could never have been that room. There's no, like, there's no stage. No bar. Alright, so where are we going? So we want to look for Jeremy's x-ray plates in the infirmary. We want to take a look inside the empty room. Well... The empty room's locked. We can get to it now, but we can't open it. The x-ray plates in the infirmary. Was there an infirmary on this map? Oh, yeah. It's down there. I guess we have not been in that entire area. Oh, but we have the... that. Okay, that's why it was leading us to this stairwell. Because we have the key for this now. Hmm. Wonder what's causing that. Probably nothing. A wheelchair? Here? What? 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 Huh. Okay, take just take that. And that's part of Unspeakable Cults. Uh, one more for that. Well, there's his x-ray. Radiography notes. Radiography. Patient Jeremy Hartwood. Date... June 14, 1930. Plates. Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. 
A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations. Even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain. Possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Well, we can't see what's going on in his head because for some reason the x-ray doesn't work. That's weird, but I guess we should lobotomize him. Just in case. Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance, as well as in efficiency. An ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have Waits order a new one. Yes, a very different condition. We should probably look at other options before that one. A brain grimed by unsettling darkness. I, I like that expression. Like, when, next time someone asks me how I'm doing, I would respond, my brain is grimed by unsettling darkness. And usually it'll be true. We got that key. Ah, do I need... do I need fuses? Okay, okay, it's right, never mind. <laughs> right here. Thanks. Alright, I need more than one. Alright, so I guess we have two out of the three x-rays. That one's locked. Surgery- oh, surgery room is right here. Okay, we got that fuse. Don't mind if I do. You always you always love it when the operating table is stained. It lends a sense of ambiance to the room. Let's see, it was in this one. That's better. Dr. Gray had been putting Jeremy through some thorough medical investigation. He was trying to break through Jeremy's stories and get to some truth, just like Combi was. Could Dr. Gray have been trying to break the contract as well? Well, I don't know if Dr. Gray believes in it. 
Like, maybe he was trying to break the contract in his own way. And by that way, being a lobotomy. Here's this. Oh, this one is- the first one's already there, I guess. We can just put these up. And we have to arrange them, of course. Oh, we can ex we can rotate them as well. Well, I mean, if I have to, I can rotate them. I guess the easy one would be this. We know which one is upright, then at least. I can't just put them anywhere. Looks like I can only... There's only like two spaces on this I can put. Whoops. Oh, there's three places I can put them. Okay. Well, no, that wouldn't match up with the two that I have here. I don't know if they have to match exactly. I guess that's good enough. I got a thing. Jeremy- Okay, I pulled Jeremy's darkness out of the x-rays. It's a broken piece of burned clay. The size suggests it being part of a statue. Have we seen a statue that would have such a thing? Alright, we found the clay worm that was in his brain. And J Karin Beast pulled his gun out. Why would he do that? Is 
say, um, how's this one doing? No, that one's locked. <gasps> Gasp! Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Why does it keep happening? It, oh yeah, it's flooding. It's flooding. I don't know if that's useful right now. There's a door over there. Uh, I don't think I can get to that door. Can Carnby swim? I don't think I can move from this spot. Carnby can't swim. Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? Alright. Break this out of the way. Doesn't seem like it, really. Can I get these out of the way? Okay, yes, I can. Is that a breakable? Is that is a it was a breakable. Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? Up the, okay, I can run up the boat. That's something there. Oh. And we're back here. Well, perfect time to have a look around this place. Oh yeah, we haven't actually gotten the chance to search the attic. Which is funny, since the attic is where the, uh, the first game started. What is that? Booze! You know what that is, Carnby. Do we need to assemble the Chthonian statuette? Yeah, we do. Let's assemble Jeremy's brain worm. Okay, we can move. Move pieces. Can we rotate pieces? Doesn't seem like it, which is, you know, that's a pretty, that's probably a good thing. I'm not sad about not being able to rotate the pieces. Let's look around before we use our talisman. Just see if there's anything here. 
Hey, there was a tessellated shard. Just look around to see if there's anything here before we go to, I guess, the brainworm dimension. So we got one out of three for Prisoner of Ice. Interact with the noose. I cannot seem to interact with this noose. Of course, the piano was down there. No uh, windows we have to block. So, like, a weird demon chicken doesn't jump through the window and attack us. Alright. Why is it, um... Okay, there we go. <laughs> Wasn't focusing. Uh, three numbers. Um, I don't suppose it's a set of three that we... I mean, I guess it would be that set of three. Because we saw that set of three appear in this... So, I guess it would make sense that these are the numbers. Would it start from the... the smallest or largest? That's not it. So, let's try... No? Let's see. So I tried 913 and 319. Maybe that's not it. I mean, we have used 913 for something already. So maybe it doesn't get a, a different... Maybe it doesn't get a second use. <laughs> Don't know why it does that. Oh, there's numbers in the box. Let's see, we have a 1, a 4, and what might be a 6 or a 9. Though, do we know what order those would go in? It's in that order. Noose. All right. Well, I guess we can now interact with that noose. And perhaps go to a brainworm dimension, perhaps? Oh, save game is blocked out. Interesting. And that's interesting because I guess it's a good time to say goodnight. Uh, we'll continue on with Chapter 4 of Alone in the Dark next time, as a Carnby uh, is going to use that noose, I guess. Going to noose it up. Well, we've discovered a lot about Jeremy's medical history and his brain worm, and, uh, well, I mean, I, we got the representation of it out of there, but, I mean, Jeremy still has a problem. And that problem is that he still is stuck in his contract with the Dark Man. But now we also know the orderlies here are looking forward to the coming of her. The Goat with a Thousand Young. And we're gonna go to a party, a ritual, everyone's gonna be wearing masks, it's gonna be a great time. Jeremy, Jeremy might not have a great time. Everyone else is going to have. Everyone else will. Emily is walking around saying, I'm, like, doing detective work and trying to discover what's happened to the patients here. Are you just getting drunk, Mr. Carnby? So she has a completely different experience happening here. For some reason, only Carnby has this stuff happening to him. Um, We did see that the man 
the librarian, the dark man, if you will, he he ha he can appear in the house, so that might be a problem. We'll continue on with Alone in the Dark next time. <laughs>